Hello, and welcome to the darkest timeline. Uh, film podcast. Hello, and welcome to the darkest timeline. We're four friends that should know better. You're a f- <laughs> Today we review a movie that made me physically ill. Uh, and hurt It didn't you. make you physically ill. It made you physically hurt yourself. It you did, dislocated your shoulder while watching this movie. It did that too. <laughs> Not intentionally, it just happened. No, yeah. That was after you fell on the ground in disgust. <laughs> oh, it did. It made me melt into a pile of anger. Shame. Uh, I gotta say, morale is low here. The This kind of hate is unhealthy. <laughs> Today we yeah. watched G-Force. From 90, 2000, 2000, 2009. 2009. 2009. 99, 2009. The darkest timeline, for those of you who are just turning in for the first time... Is pretty dark this week. <laughs> this is where we connect a series of bad movies based off of actors or actresses that are portrayed in those movies. We watched Escape from L.A. last week, and Steve Buscemi brought us to this cluster storm. Uh, cluster storm. Cluster storm. Cluster storm. In case you don't know what that is, it's some crappy thing in the movie that means nothing. So would you wanna, someone here want to just summarize... The they are guinea pigs, and they work for the government, but they don't officially work for the government, but they want to, and they do a mission, and it doesn't quite work out. But they find a thing that's probably messing with, like, they, they, it's going to destroy the world, basically, and, they f- and, and the government doesn't believe them, and then they get thrown other places and have to come back together, and they win the day, and it's dumb. It's dumb. And it becomes Transformers. At, and in the end, in the third act. Terrible. And the mole was the real villain. The mole was the mole. Oh, spoiler. Yeah. Doesn't until, well, that's the end of the movie. Up until the point where he realizes that he doesn't want to be a villain, and then he decides not to be one. Hey, you know, Total 180 repentance. That, just, might, that, that might be somebody's favorite part of the movie, so you, know, you might want to be, be quiet about that. So let's jump right into it. Favorite parts of the movie... I have two. Oh, that's you have two. two too many. Technically, maybe even three. David, can I have zero? <laughs> you can, you can, you can argue with me on this if you'd like. I have one. I thought the mice were very cute. The one they go, oh, the horror! Oh my god! And they start trying right. to bring the other one back to life, only it's just faking being dead. Yeah, uh, I loved the mice. I thought they, they were adorable. adorable. They were what? adorable. What? But I, I still hated them. Oh. I still hated them. And you used the word love. You loved the mice? The mice were cute. Uh, yeah. I have the mice written down as well. <laughs> oh, guys. That was that was just a, a note for me to mention yeah. them. It wasn't going to be my favorite thing. So I didn't even mention the mice in my notes. I also liked Mooch, the fly. Oh, the fly. <laughs> I thought oh, he was a plucky little R2-D2 type sidekick that uh, worked. Oh, yeah. It was actually, it was well done. I've got to say... Possibly my favorite part about the movie is how much they tried. And I'm talking about anyone in the movie. I'm talking about the people making the movie. Because everything looked really nice. They did a good job. A for effort. Oh. F for how you did it. Just, uh, <laughs> because, I mean, the hamsters, they look, I mean, that, ju- guinea pigs. The guinea pigs, they look like guinea pigs. Dead <laughs> fur. Oh. All the little stuff they made. Oh, it was uh, the Transformer thing in the end. It that'd looked be, all right. That'd be really disgusting. What? what? If you had fur. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that would be really gross. And that is how many how does it have puns in the movie. Oh, all the, every other line was a bumper sticker pun. No, every single line. They probably wrote the whole script with bumper stickers. Mm. Just stuck them all together. They went to a gas station. My favorite part of the movie was the only part of the movie that I bought that I actually bought into was uh, the uh, speckles, the moles' uh, motivation to be the bad guy. Oh my god! That was the only thing in the movie I bought into. So his plan 
is to have all the he has all these devices under his control. Don't worry about that. It doesn't matter. It's stupid. And he wants to bring in all the space trash that's around the Earth and bring it tumbling down so everyone's forced underground like the moles because they deserve it. Also, they wouldn't be forced underground. They would just perish. Also true. But they... Uh, but, uh, he wants to do this because as a little baby mole, uh, his parents were killed in front of him along with like his entire family because everyone wants to exterminate the moles because there are, what, what do you say, like two billion search results for moles on Google and all of them are how to get rid of them. And, and his father... So they they show they show his father talking to him as a child, and his father says to him, oh, "I don't remember what exactly it is, son. If you ever have the chance to bring humanity to its knees, take it." <laughs> <laughs> and that out of the entire plot of the movie, that's the only thing I bought into. Yeah, was I, that was that Speckles would go after humanity if he ever got the shot. And let me say, the luck was on his side to get that shot. Just, just, uh Like, his father didn't think he would get that shot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any other uh, favorite parts of the movie? I've got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing that you could look at the movie and I, go like, yeah. I dig that. No. No. no absolutely not. Well, There's even in, nothing. Even, even in the context of the movie? No. Not, nothing. Not the little three ball thing that was still Their weird, in the weird like car. vehicle? No. Oh, I hated it the all. Three, they each had guinea, guinea pig pigs. dolls. <laughs> oh, God. I hated it. <laughs> uh, so I think we should also take a moment to breathe, to, to introduce ourselves. Oh. Hi, I'm David. I'm Ian. I'm Dylan. I'm Brett. We're all happy to be here. Oh, it's so good. Good to be back. (laughs) Okay. Okay, on with what we're supposed to be doing. So now, uh, seeing as we've completely plumbed the depths of that movie for anything good, what was (laughs) the worst part? (sighs) Okay. That's a hell of a question. Yeah, that's a loaded question. Okay, the worst part is completely glossing over the completely insane number of civilian deaths that would have happened in the very end of Act 3, or just during Act 3. So the f***ing mole... Speckles? Speckles. Speckles. I I forgot all of their names. (laughs) Who I think was played by Nicolas Cage. Oh, that's right. Oh, I forgot. I knew he was in the movie, but I could never place his freaking voice. Of course he'd be Nicolas Cage. But, I mean, he hit his voice very well. His voice was, like, his voice was, like, pitched up. Was the mole's name Speckles because he wore specs as in glasses? Oh, I didn't even get that till now, but now I hate it, too. (laughs) It's terrible. Uh, Okay. Speckles made, like... All of these appliances that are a very popular appliance company, apparently, because they're all over. Everyone has these appliances, and they are all secretly robots that can apparently fuse together, because that happened later. (laughs) But they have, like, lasers and knives and shit all over them, like everything from a fridge to a coffee maker. And so it shows a bunch of those coming to life, and they're alive for a good... 15, 20 minutes at the end of the movie. And so, you know, knives and lasers coming to life all over the world with the sole purpose of killing humans, I'm thinking just maybe, like, 15, 20 million people died during those 15 (laughs) minutes. And it's just not brought up. All the mole has to do is deactivate Everything just deactivate all the chips inside those things after everything's said and done. Chips, there's chips inside of them. Yeah, chips do it. Chips <laughs> in a bunch of like pneumatic <laughs> and lasers. God, ah, <laughs> oh. yeah. No one mentions the millions of human casualties. I feel bad having to choose a worst part of this movie because <laughs> I feel like it's doing the movie a disservice. Because I feel like a lot of stuff was really on par with itself for being the worst part of it. So, I mean, I have to applaud the movie for that. So, because it was just the worst part throughout? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it did a good job of, of keeping pace with Homogeny itself. Homogeny of medi- yeah. Yeah, yeah. mediocrity? <laughs> mediocrity is overselling it. Oh, God. 
my least favorite part, which is gonna gonna sound a little a little less than than other people's, but bear with me for this. The fireworks show. That <laughs> <laughs> should have been your favorite part. No, I forgot no, about it. It would have no, been my favorite part. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> what about the fireworks show, Dylan? Okay, so they're drive. They're they're escaping from the FBI in a little ball. Those little hamster balls. They're they're in hamster balls that have motors and. Shit. I think there were little ATVs inside. Were there it little was, ATVs? I think that's how it was working. I Ugh. didn't even notice that, but I hate it more now. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> um, but they're getting away from the FBI, which should already bother you. They're going down streets and at the they they're going fast enough that in like Long Beach. An SUV yeah. is getting like three feet off the ground. <laughs> so they're going very fast and they end up going through a fireworks show, which, you know, okay, I'll buy that. They actually set it off and then they go through and, and they, they blast out at the end over a crowd and the crowd starts applauding, which, you know, in this movie, whatever, f*** it, I don't care anymore. But there was a crowd of people there to watch this fireworks show. And this fireworks show was taking place at what is clearly about 2 p.m. Yeah, at best. At best. It is possibly it is, noon. It is day. It is very clearly day, and they are about to start because there are hundreds of people there waiting to see it. A fireworks show in the daytime. They could have set the last sequence easily in the evening, and that whole thing wouldn't would have two things made a lot more sense, and the fireworks would have actually looked cool, like on a backdrop of night. <laughs> Instead of, like, a blue sky. <laughs> There's so much of that sequence that bothered me on, on such a fundamental level about just... It's, it's not like the movie bothered me. Oh. It, was, it, was the people, it was the people that set up the fireworks show within the world of the movie bothered that's, me. Uh, Dylan, that's it? I want to add to this because there is one holiday a year mm -hmm. where fireworks are very prevalent in the United States of America. We know this as the 4th of July. Many yet, of us do. Yet, for some reason, the fireworks show that happens in the middle of the day yeah. mm -hmm. is Fiesta Day Fireworks. And it isn't only what? a Latino crowd. The name of the, the thing was Fiesta Day Fireworks. It was some, like, Cinco de Mayo knockoff. Is, you know, they could have called it Cinco de Mayo. That's, that's not a, copywritten. Yeah, I was going to say, it's not trademarked. The war on Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> <laughs> they did uh, have a gigantic American flag that went off in uh, sparklers or something that they went through. It was the dumbest Was thing. it an American flag? Yes. Oh, whatever. What's your worst? What's the worst part of the movie? The, for me, the absolute worst part of this movie, because I could not get my mind off of it, was... All the tiny little stupid trinket bullshit that was made for them? <laughs> like, who the, who the f*** makes that shit? Like, where do you buy tiny scopes and tiny mic- Miniature! Miniature microphones! I think that guy made it. Clearly he made them himself. But you know, you know like the kind that like, like Madonna would wear like in a performance where it's like tiny little thin mic that's like hidden? Mm -hmm. So you can't see it on stage or like, you know, like theater performers or something? Yeah. They have those in guinea pig size. Well, only those are special. Those make it so humans can understand what the guinea pigs are saying. But how the f*** do you make it? How do you even ma Who makes it? Guess what? They didn't think about that. I guarantee oh, it. They had tiny, like, tote bags and miniature diamond earrings and, like, well, tiny parachutes, everything. Also, the government apparently was not wholly aware of what they were doing. So someone in a government lab somewhere kept getting orders for weird, tiny sh** that was very specific and was like, f*** it, I guess that's my job. Right, and then what about, like, the government treasurer? Like, we're, I'm putting money into what? A G-force? <laughs> dur, dur, dur. Uh. 18 months till to retirement. <laughs> <laughs> Write another credit card. Here you go. I have, I have a small tangent off of that. Why would the FBI ever shut this place down? If they could make animals talk. Well, oh, if yeah, they could put right. roach cameras on roaches and have those go reliably exactly where you wanted them to and just point a camera at something and it, just watch it. It's Be very true. The technology surrounding the talking guinea, fi guinea pig Delta Squad is interesting. Like, you could do a whole... Yeah. That, there's your government grant right there. And why... 
the, the moment that guy, the guy, Will Arnett's character saw like a rodent talking, he was like, whoa, what else could you make talk and intelligent and do things for us? Right. It wouldn't be, oh, you failed your mission, you're fired, everything's dust. Yeah, you made talking animals. Blah, bull I mean, the best way to deal with that for from like a government like black site standpoint would be to train rodents to do stuff. You can talk to them and stuff, and then you send them out into the field without any of that stuff on. So no one knows that they work for you. They do their thing. They come back. You put it back on and you debrief them. So no one would even know you were doing it. Or, sure. I mean, let's talk about options for what we could possibly do if we can control Every animal. I don't think we should. <laughs> it's, I am it's, with Ian. <laughs> it's not about control, David. It's about understanding and being equals. Yeah, communication. Communication. Yeah, I guess this was a uh, guinea pig rights film <laughs> at its core. <laughs> oh. And you know what? You Tracy Morgan signed more. off on that. Oh, man. Oh, that brings me to my second thing that's so sad is that Sam Rockwell's in this movie, and I love that actor. Oh, yeah. And Steve Buscemi. All right. I've got my work. There's so much to hate about this movie. At, at the end of the movie, it was so bad. I literally slid out of my chair in pain of groaning. I actually kept a groan count of 26 <laughs> times did this movie make me audibly go, uh, Only 26? 26. That's I think it? once every two or three minutes, yeah. So yeah, there's some dead time. The, the darkest <laughs> part of this for me, um, and I've got some other interesting things, but the darkest thing for me is you're training these guinea pigs and these moles and these flies to be like high adrenaline, super action heroes. But I kept thinking about the lifespan of a fly or a guinea Like poor Munch. He's not making it to to the elite squadron. Like he was not in the <laughs> you notice he wasn't in the end credits. He probably died of old age before he got his badge from the FBI. Which one was Munch? That was the fly. How do you remember its name? How do you know it wasn't in the end credits? It was a fly. It was a fly. They live for like a, a day. week or yeah, like yeah, the, he didn't even live as long as this movie went on for. It, and trust me, with the chaotic, reckless lifestyle that he was living, he was going to die young. Oh, yeah. He was going through every possible dangerous place to fly anywhere. Well, he knew he knew there was a camera following him, and he had to get the coolest shot. Yeah. Guys, he was a rebel. Yeah. This, was, this was shot in, was, this is real life, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, he does that it tiny is. GoPro. He just had to make it look extreme. And did GoPro make it, or what? It's <laughs> so small. I and don't know. Here's the other thing that... Just, it pissed me off about this movie. The opening sequence, right? They're trying to break into the super secret, super secret laboratory. And, you know, they've got all their gear on. And the guards walk around the corner. And so they all put their backs to the wall like, oh, no, maybe they won't see us. You're a f***ing guinea pig. Even if they saw you, they would not care. Yeah. The most suspicious thing you could do is dive behind a wall. <laughs> And be standing. And be standing. <laughs> With tiny backpacks and such. Oh, there was also one of, one of my favorite lines that I also hated in this movie was, there's no such thing as a stealth guinea pig. Oh, my <laughs> there's God. No such thing it was a... hamster. He messed it up. He said hamster. There ain't no such thing as a stealth hamster. Ugh. It's true. It's all terrible. Yet. <laughs> I wrote that down, too. We got our best moles working on it. Oh. <laughs> They're all traitors. <laughs> it's a, I also it's, think, you know, if this is about guinea pig rights, this is also about uh, mole stereotypes. <laughs> the, the mole is the mole. But he, he, he gets it back in the end, kind of. I don't know why. Millions of deaths and all that. Shifty at best. I, oh. I would not trust him in G-Force 2. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Can you imagine if they make a... F G-Force 2? It's been seven years now. I, I don't think it. they will. That said, it made enough money for them to be like, I guess it was worth it. Well, not only that, and they made that, a video game. That kind of CG, definitely a lot easier to pull off now. By the way, this is a Jerry Bruckheimer film. Yes. This is made. This was the first 3D film that Jerry Bruckheimer ever did. You looked that up? Yeah. Wow. Um, all, well, I, all of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies are Jerry Bruckheimer films, and they're not all golden. Right. Well, obviously. But. Fun, fun fact about this movie. It's loosely based off of Jerry Bruckheimer's fifth grade science project 
of a map what? running around in a race in a maze. Are well, you kidding me? It says also here, director. Oh, good, you're kidding. Okay. Oh, Thank you're God. kidding me. Okay. Well, the, oh. this is this is actually tr- <laughs> this story is actually true, and this is sad. Director Hoyt Yatman's that's the director. I don't even I never heard of him before. His and you son, never will. Uh, Hoyt Yatman the fourth, oh. came up with the original idea for the film when he was five years old. Yetman liked his son's story so much that he brought it to producer Jerry Bruckheimer. And Bruckheimer said, eh, f*** it. Greenlit. <laughs> there was one more thing I wanted to, I wanted to mention. The, this movie is so ridden with cliches uh, that you could oh, yeah. pause the movie at any given time, literally at any moment, and just, just brainstorm for about a few seconds what the most possibly cliche thing that could happen next is. And nine times out of ten, you would be right. It's because a, everything happens in this movie. And like all the interpersonal drama and things that would be in like any spy movie or police procedural or anything like that. It all happened in the movie. And it all cycled through completely. Yeah, it's it's piled with one liners too. Oh god. Like stupid like jokes you hear from movies that you were like, oh that's a terrible movie. I forgot about that one. Alright. Quick yes or no. Ready? Hmm. Better or worse than Ghoulies Three? Oh, I can't. Oh. I can't say. I oh. did not see it. Why would you ask that question? Because you know the answer. You know what? And you know I don't want to say it. It's worse. I can't. I can't. Ah. Uh, it's got to be worse. It, because Ghoulies Three knew what it was and was that. Did it? This movie did it. Wanted to be something that could, it could never possibly attain. Oh, I gotta say, it wanted to be taken seriously. No. Uh, well, also, what's the full title? Ghoulies Three: Ghoulies Go to College. You have yeah. to know right there that they're poking fun just, of themselves. Just, just, I don't know. Oh boy, I can't answer that question. It's Dylan's better. freaking out. It's, it's worse. I, it's, Dylan, it's, Dylan, I, Dylan I is. I want to say. I want to say. I want to say that G-Force is better, oh. but I really don't want to say that G-Force is better than anything. Did you enjoy watching G-Force more than that movie, Ghoulies? I didn't enjoy watching either movie. That's the hey, problem. Hey. Okay, here's one thing, though. While you were watching Ghoulies, you laughed and smiled. At how st- just that what was happening was happening on film. Yeah, but there but were muscles in your mouth, and they were telling your brain that you were wait, happy. We, this didn't happen in G Force. We, we each laughed once in G Force, except oh, for Brett. Yes, thank you. Please put that disclaimer on this. Brett did not laugh once in this film. But everyone else laughed once. Just I think. Once. I think. Yeah. I, just, I think. Literally. Just it might once. Have, okay. It might have. Just, it might just be that it's been too long since I saw Ghoulies Three. Mm-hmm. That that I have worse memories of it than than I think, but I mean maybe next week maybe next week I'll have an answer because I'll be able to let G Force sink into my psyche a little bit more. No, no, oh. we're not going to ask you again next week. Just answer the question. I'm literally going to drink to ask, forget this. Oh, film. I don't. I, I won't answer the question. I just did say quick yes or no. I'm sorry. <laughs> you asked a really hard question. Yeah, I just answered yes or no. I'm going to say this one was better than Ghoulies Three production value. Oh, well, production man. value doesn't make it a better Dave, movie. Dave, you idiot! I gotta, I gotta, <laughs> if I gotta choose between if I gotta choose between a turd and a polished turd, I'm going for the polished. You know what? Turd. I will. I will agree. Why? I will, I will, I, it's because it's it's bad. It's okay. You don't understand when I say better. I don't mean good. Okay. I don't mean it's good. But you're using the word better. I'm using. You can be. You, now, I won't use that analogy. That's really going horrible. Uh, but there's there's a lot of things that are better than, like, if I strangled you to death right now, there's a lot of things I could do to you that would be better than that that wouldn't be good to do to you. Okay. Oh, God. I'm sitting right next to him, by the way, guys. Um, <laughs> that's like saying, that's like, that's like someone farting and then going, oh, gross. And then me farting going, well, that's better. No, no, that's the same. They're both oh. farting. Like, no, I don't know what you have All right, to equate gentlemen, to that. With okay. our few well, minutes I mean, left here, he let's, could, oh we're, we're going to stop here because we need to talk about what's next. Oh, yeah, what is next? Do we? I looked at... Um, oh, wait, no, what, who's this movie for? Oh, who's this movie oh, yeah. for? Oh, well, yeah, what's the rating? What would oh. you give this movie? Right. What? Who is this movie for? And given that audience, given that audience, mm-hmm. what would you rate this movie? Okay. This movie was made for five-year-olds. I think five to nine. Five to nine would totally land that. If I was nine years old, I would totally rate this movie like double thumbs up. I freaking loved it. Because I didn't curse when I was nine. (laughs) 
If I was, yeah, I'm going to say about a seven-year-old boy, I would lose my shit. In fact, I remember a movie growing up called Toy Soldiers, I believe. Yeah. Loved that movie when I was tiny, man. I, w- I do not know if that one's going to hold up, but I feel uh, it's no. in the same spirit of the, as this movie. Just something a little boy would love. Part of me hates that you just equated small soldiers to G-Force, and that just goes to show how long it's been since I've seen small soldiers. <laughs> is it small or is it toy? Or it's, small. it's small. Small, small soldiers. Small. Oh, that's when the, when the, the toys, toys are alive. Yeah. yeah. It's like Toy Story, but violent. Really dark, too. If I remember correctly, it takes a turn and someone dies, or they, they put them on, like... A, a table with a saw yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah that, that can get f***ed up in that movie. It's It goes <laughs> it goes places. It goes places. So, I'm going to go ahead and say that movie is a better movie than G-Force. Yeah. So G-Force, I, keeping in mind it's made for a seven-year-old, I would give it like 10 billion stars. Just two thumbs up, <laughs> over the moon. billion stars. Uh, you were just given, way into stars when you were seven, weren't you? Given that I'm a 34-year-old man... No, you don't get to tell that rating. That's not what this is about. <laughs> Brett, what do you think? <laughs> uh, who is this movie for? Uh, I know who this movie is for. This movie is for any company that makes miniature-sized items, tiny little trinkets, <laughs> <laughs> and has ever had a dream of selling those things to people. Um, you know, tiny Starbucks cups or something. That's who this movie is for. <laughs> and I guarantee you they'd give it 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10, guys. This movie is like, yeah, buy our stuff for your hamsters. Yeah. Oh, uh, Does your hamster need a PDA? <laughs> what hamster doesn't that, need a PDA? That works, too, they, by the way. Just, this is 2009, and this guy had made fucking, like, half-inch by one-inch full-range tablets for a, for, for a guinea pig. But We no, don't have that technology now. No. Back off, because he doesn't have a cell phone, though. There's no iPhone here. There's just yeah, a, there's a PDA. There's some dude had a what, flip phone. What are you talking about? They have cellular ear devices that, that go up to a satellite and back down to some other guinea hey, pig's hey, ear. you don't know how they work. Oh, well, what are they, radio? They're, they, like, on the other side of the fucking city. Yeah, really good radio. Oh, I want to murder. This movie. <laughs> I want to murder this movie. I, think, I just okay. want to murder. Oh, I, think, Jerry Bruckheimer. <laughs> I think. I think. Murder Jerry movie. Bruckheimer with a copy of this movie. That would be ironic. <laughs> I think that this movie was made specifically for the interrogators at Guantanamo Bay Penitentiary <laughs> in in Cuba. Oh man. <laughs> And 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 given given that, I will give it nine out of ten war crimes. <laughs> what? Are you saying because they like it so much because they're crazy, that, or no, they no, use it that, for torture? They they use it for torture. Oh, they do. They do. All right. To commit do. war crimes. They, <laughs> will Arnett has a series of. Oh, movies. there is a bunch. Just bad ones. Will Arnett was in this movie. He played the <laughs> primary government agent. He was in... Oh, no, he's in that new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. He's in the new Teenage Mutant no. Ninja Turtles movie. No. He was in MIB 3. He was in oh. Jonah Hex. Oh. He was in Semi-Pro. Oh. And he was also in Blades of Glory. See, we can't, oh. we can't do those ones because those are supposed to be goofy Ah, yeah, they're supposed to be. Well, Jonah Hex wasn't supposed to be goofy. It just I ended up being stupid. I remember that movie. It okay, hey, we could watch Jonah Hex. It was a bad know. adaptation of Jonah Hex. Just remember that. Yeah, it didn't make any sense. Nobody cares about that books. because nobody's a fan of Jonah Hex. He has a very small following. <laughs> I don't know why they made a movie, but it was a bad adaptation anyway. Well, I don't want to see Jonah Hex because I don't want to uh, alienate the small community of Jonah Hex enthusiasts. Yes. But if we watch but Jonah Hex on that movie, we'll just make them happy. Well, if we watch Jonah Hex, then we could follow uh, Megan Fox to Transformers 2. No, we can't think like that. I know. No, I know we, we can't. We're playing checkers, not chess. One move, <laughs> one move ahead. Hey. Some people think ahead in checkers, man. Don't you disrespect the checkers community. And I'm going to, I forget, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I know he's in all sorts of stuff. Uh, Bill Nye? Oh, Bill, Bill Nye? Nye. No, I love Bill Nye. <laughs> not, uh, not, no, not it's Bill Knightley, I think is how Bill you say Knightley. it. Bill yeah. Knightley. Uh, in I, Frankenstein. That oh, yeah. That, oh, that, that is obvious oh. pure garbage. Oh, I took a oh. photo of that. Where is I, that? I, Frankenstein. Oh. Have any of y'all seen that? 
No, oh, I haven't. We've seen it. No, I haven't. I've oh, seen, I've seen it. I've seen it. Oh, this side of the couch is awesome. Oh, uh, Bill bad. Knightley is also in a terrible movie called Blow Dry that had oh, yeah. um, Josh Hardnett in it. And he's like a hairstylist for some reason. And what? he gets girls that way. No, what? I'm good. I don't need to and do then, that. And then there's another one called Guest House Paradiso. And it's got like, it's got other crazy people. And like, um, well, Simon Pegg's in it. Really? Yeah, Simon Pegg's in that. I don't know. It looks terrible. It has terrible ratings. Um, and he's also in Curse of the Pink Panther, the 1983 film. And that cover looks like Well, it was a Pink Panther movie. Those were all... Yeah, but they're kind of bad, too. Well, I'm mean, supposed to be weird and campy. True. Here's the best one for Tracy Morgan. I think this was one for When Tracy you say Morgan. best. Yeah. For, I can't Man. remember who... I can't actually remember who's in it, but the movie is RV from 2006. Oh, no, that is Robin Williams... God rest his soul. That was that? oh, is that who's in it? Is it too soon? Can we shit all over a Robin Williams? Wow, he's made a bad movie. I don't. I've never even heard of that movie. We were thinking about doing a Robin Williams movie before. We were. Jack. Jack. It's true. Oh. Um. Oh, there's Cowboys and Aliens. Uh, Sex and the City two. Uh. Oof. Sex and the City two is that. Definitively a pretty bad movie. But that's also like three hours long, right? Right. Yeah, Guys, we, we also that. We also have Batman Forever. How's Batman Forever? Um, that's through, um, what's his name, who played Husky. Um, oh. He, he's Iron Man's agent or whatever. Iron or his, Man? Or his bodyguard. Iron he's the, Man? Yeah, he's the director. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's John true. Favreau. John Favreau. Favreau. Yeah, yeah okay. I couldn't think of his name. Wait. He's also in Daredevil. Oh, yeah. And that was a Ooh. pile of I, okay, so we'd have to watch the theatrical cut of Daredevil because the director's cut is much better. Okay. I, actually, I have heard that. Two last ones, and these are both doozies. Uh, Zookeeper with uh, Kevin James. He's yeah, the, more talking mm. animals. Yeah, I know. No. And then and then last would no. be John Carter, which uh, oh was the God. biggest biggest disappointment of movie history ever. I have just I have I've been reading the John Carter book series. I just started like a week ago. Yeah. So I could not bring myself to watch that <laughs> shit storm of a movie while I, reading the better version of it. What was the other one? You said Batman and Robin. No, oh, there was another one right um, next to Batman. Daredevil. Daredevil. Yeah, that was That's not so bad though. Oh, I it's heard it not, is. It's not well, it's not it's not a great adaptation. We've seen it. Okay. Times. But it's not Terrible. It's not like that. It's not. It's not G Force. Okay. No. Well, we have Zookeeper, which well, looks god awful. Sex in the City what Two. Was that other one? What I was that? What see. was in that first run of movies that we uh, we were talking about? Because Jonah Hex. Jonah Hex is well. That's also like just like kind of a. I mad. Frankenstein. I Frankenstein. I Frankenstein. It kind of takes the f-ing cake, guys. Okay, we're doing I Frankenstein. Oh. I Frank- no coins this week. Yeah, that brought us Jeep. Uh, so. <laughs> no. Let's do that. Let's do it. Hands, no. In. No. Hands, Hands in. No. Hands in. No. No. Oh, okay, fine. I cannot. I cannot Ruined agree. I cannot agree on anything like that. I, I Frankenstein? I Frankenstein. I Frankenstein. You won't You're, enjoy it. You're outvoted. That's the point. Let's f- hope. Doesn't that also bring us to possibly Transformers 2? Is that the Transformers 2 one? Hmm? No. No. That'd be Jonah Hex. But okay. I don't know who's in that movie. All right. So... That's it. We're done. Ugh. Oh, yeah. wait. So we uh, we talked about watching the trailer at the end of the podcast. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what we got to do. So we're going to watch the trailer for I, Frankenstein, and then we'll be right back. <sighs> we just watched the uh, first trailer for I, Frankenstein, and initial impressions, everybody. Well, Dave and I have seen the movie. Okay, so, so me and Brett, initial impressions. Uh, My first impression is we're f- because this is terrible. Okay. My my first impression was Frankenstein was the creator and not the monster. Yeah. I Frankenstein. What is this? Like a iPod? Something new from Apple? <laughs> Dylan, that's like the nerd equivalent of being a grammar Nazi. I'm so sorry. No, but I, it's a problem with God. every almost nerd almost Nazis. Almost every adaptation of Frankenstein is like everyone's like, look, it's Frankenstein, but that's the monster. It's different. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Also, it looked like a horrible movie. I think the best part is, though, Aaron Eckhart looked like like the cool quarterback in high school that actually is like into the cure because he was wearing so much eye like shadow and makeup. <laughs> like he's like this hunky dude, but somehow he's like really into like the Smiths or something. I just you know? got to say, like, he also had that whole uh, Bruce Campbell from Escape from L.A. thing going on. I 
I thought the trailer, even the first time I saw it, looked cool. Like I looked, oh, yeah. I wish I could I see like, that movie. Hey, no, man. If, we, if we get to see that movie, you guys the, are lucky. The guess problem, what? You do not, not get to see movie. that movie. The problem with that trailer <laughs> is that looking at it, it tells me that those are the coolest shots in the movie. You might be right. Oh, that means it's just going to be like filler with terrible dialogue. There's going to be a lot. I know there's going to be a lot of plot and oh. backstory and like like angst. And it's going to be it's not it's, it looks like it shouldn't be an angsty movie, but it's going to be anyway. <laughs> yeah, he does look really angsty. He's like walking around. in a. Oh, it's, this is our second movie with the duster. Sweet. Yeah. Another yeah. another leather duster in this movie. Yeah, we should just have the duster timeline. <laughs> <laughs> That's your timeline. Uh, this right. this has been the darkest timeline. Go, See you next week. Go away. Have a have oh. This just, is gonna be great. Go do it. We're man. gonna have a good time. <laughs> but we, how do we wrap it though? We should wrap it with something. Yeah, we we said goodbye. That's fine. That's yeah. it. Just like See you later. Yeah, that's it. I don't know. <laughs> it's terrible. It should have some closure. Son, if you ever get the chance to bring mankind to its knees. Do it. Let's get this party started, right? <laughs>